Welcome to Criterion Reviews, I'm Nathan, and today we'll be going through my Criterion Collection. Welcome to Criterion Reviews, I'm Nathan, and today we'll be doing part two of my Criterion Collection. the Royal Tenenbaums and today we will start off with Francois Truffaut's Day for Night. This is one of my uh, most recent Criterion purchases. Uh, I've only seen the 400 Blows and Shoot the Piano Players so I'm very excited to dive into his filmography. He's a very interesting filmmaker and I've heard a lot of good stuff about this movie so I'm excited for this one. And I bought it along with Jim Jarmusch's Down By Law. I love this movie. Like, really, really love this movie. I actually watched this movie because I'm a huge Tom Waits fan, and that's how I discovered uh, Jim Jarmusch. And he's a really awesome filmmaker, man. I've seen, I've seen this, I've seen Night on Earth, which I definitely want to add to my collection. Stranger Than Paradise was great. Um, today, I think I might be watching Mystery Train. Might do a review of that later, we'll see. But yeah, awesome movie. Next one is one I've had for a long time, one of my favorites, Brazil. This is this is essential. And, uh, almost everybody I know who loves Criterion movies loves this movie, and it makes perfect sense because it's a beautiful, dreamlike, dystopian, just amazing goodness here. And I did not know that this had such a uh, difficult production and stuff like that. There's some cool behind the scenes features of Brazil, but yeah, Terry Gilliam, man, he's the man. This might be my favorite Kubrick movie. Might. I mean, it's uh, I, it's hard to say, but Barry Lyndon is seriously amazing. I watched this for the first time last year and was floored. I I, I was kind of hesitant. I was like, because I'm not really a big period piece kind of dude, but I just thought this was one of the most beautiful movies and the story was amazing and it was perfectly paced. Barry Lyndon, amazing, amazing movie. This one I'm excited to watch. I have not seen it yet. In a Lonely Place. I'm a big Bogey fan. I mean, who isn't? And uh, this was a movie I kind of um, heard about like a few months ago. And I was like, hey, I haven't heard of this one. And it's part of the Criterion Collection, so I'll check it out. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it, but it's Humphrey Bogart. I mean, it's got to be good, right? I already talked about this one a few times already. Rushmore, not much to say about this. One of my personal favorites. Um, I'm a, a huge Wes Anderson fan, and uh, this might this might be my favorite, tied with Royal Ton of Bombs. I always go back and forth between those two. Uh, another one of my personal favorites, Charade. This is probably my favorite uh, Audrey Hepburn movie. Maybe not my favorite Cary Grant movie. That might go to North by Northwest, but yeah. The best Hitchcock movie that Hitchcock never made. And another one of my favorites, this was the first review I did on my channel, Ghost World. I love this movie. I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, uh, it's it's underrated. It's underrated not only uh, as a film, but in the Criterion Collection in particular, it's underrated. More people should check this movie out. I think it's wonderful. Another one of my personal favorites, La Haine. As you can see, I've not opened this one up yet. I watched this on the Criterion channel. Uh, this movie's amazing. Might be even more relevant today than it was back in 1995. Um, amazing, amazing film. Another one I'm very excited for. They did a reprint of Army of Shadows for a long time. This was an out of print Blu-ray. And I was like, this sounds really cool because I'm, I'm still getting into Jean-Pierre Melville films. So I have not seen this yet. And for a while, I was like, I'm probably never gonna be able to get my hands on this. And then they did a reprint of it, which is amazing. And so I hope they do that with more Blu-rays that have gone out of print. If they do a reprint of The Third Man, I am there. 
but yes, I'm excited to see this. I've not seen it yet. Speaking of reprints, this is not a reprint. This is an original. Might be my rarest Blu-ray, along with Le Circle Rouge. This is Chungking Express. I love this movie. I also saw it on the Criterion channel. I was like, God, I would love to get a copy of this, but it, people were selling it for absurd prices on eBay. And then on this forum, I actually asked if anyone had a copy and was willing to sell it. And so this very nice gentleman sold it to me for like 60 bucks. And I was like, hell yeah, that's an easy purchase there. This movie's amazing. I love Wong Kar Wai. He's great. I have another one of his movies in here. Another one I'm excited to see that I have not seen yet. Purple Noon. Um, I know this is kind of the, I, yeah, this is the first adaptation of the talented Mr. Ripley, uh, which uh, it is a common thing, uh, because I have the American friend, and I guess that's another uh, adaptation of Talented Mr. Ripley. I don't know what that is. I guess it was books. It's a book series, and that Matt Damon was in a movie, so I really don't know anything about the, the story of the Talented Mr. Ripley, but I got this because I like Ellen DeLon as an actor. He's really cool, so yeah, I'm excited to see this. Next one that I have not seen yet. If, uh, I'll be honest, the main reason I bought this is because uh, Stanley Kubrick said he cast uh, Malcolm McDowell and Clockwork Orange because of this movie. And it also sounds really kind of crazy, this film. It looks pretty cool. So I'm excited to watch this one. This one I have seen and very much enjoy, Sid and Nancy. Uh, another film by Alex Cox, same director by Repo Man, and I love Repo Man. This movie is a trip. It's, uh, it's probably not accurate to the actual story, uh, but I don't care. Just filmmaking wise, it's amazing. Gary Oldman does an incredible performance. Uh, it's a shame that he really did not like making this movie at all, but his performance is amazing. So shout out to Gary Oldman, one of the best. So this is a movie I have seen. I just haven't seen the Criterion version of it. Pan's Labyrinth. I mean, this movie's amazing. It's it's beautiful, gothic, horror, fantasy. I mean, who doesn't know about this movie? So the special features look pretty cool too. I need to dive into this. I've seen the movie, I just haven't seen my Criterion Blu-ray of it. This one's another one of my personal favorite movies, Francis Ha. This is like one of my feel-good movies. If I'm feeling down, this would be a great movie to put on. I love this movie. Kind of have a huge crush on Greta Gerwig. She's just so lovable and does a great authentic performance in this movie. Very reminiscent of like Woody Allen, kind of has that kind of uh, kind of tone. Noah Baumbach is, a, is obviously a stellar filmmaker, but yeah, this might be my favorite movie of his actually, Francis Ha. The Graduate. Maybe my favorite film soundtrack of all time. It's, it's up there, man. Simon and Garfunkel, amazing. I mean, I love, who doesn't love this movie? This is an amazing, amazing movie. I, I got nothing else to say. <laughs> All right, this one's also in my uh, in my top ten. Paris, Texas. Um, I need to do a review of this one soon. I actually rewatched it um, like last month or two months ago. One one of the most impactful movies for me. A uh, movie that I went into knowing nothing about and emotionally it just hit me like a ton of bricks. God, this movie is incredible. This one I have not seen yet. Rebecca, Alfred Hitchcock. I'm a big, I'm a big Hitchcock fan, and um, this is one of the ones that uh, doesn't get brought up a whole lot. And uh, it looks really beautiful, super gothic, and uh, yeah, it's Hitchcock. Come on. All right, moving on to another favorite, Punch Drunk Love. This is a trip of a movie. I don't know if it's my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie. Uh, it's either this boogie nights or there will be blood he's just an awesome filmmaker but this movie is seriously amazing so weird god it's great this is one of the purchases i got last year that i still haven't seen yet uh mainly because it's like four hours long until the end of the world um uh, vim wenders is one of those directors i'm really looking forward to getting into more of his stuff but this is so long <laughs> like i don't mind a long movie it's just you gotta plan your day around stuff like that, but I mean, it looks pretty crazy. I don't really know much about it, but yeah, Vim Wenders. I'm excited for this one. This is this is the one I pre-ordered along with Army of Shadows, Grand Budapest Hotel. I'm looking to get every Wes Anderson movie that's currently part of the Criterion Collection. This movie's amazing. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, the more I rewatch it, the more I'm like, is this my favorite Wes Anderson movie? Maybe it's getting up there, but I I love this one. I rewatch it quite a bit. Another one of my favorite films ever, Blowout. This movie kicks ass. Um, Brian De Palma, super underappreciated filmmaker, I feel. I mean, yeah, he's got big movies like Scarface, Untouchables, 
uh, Carrie, but this is probably my favorite of his. This movie is absolutely amazing, and Travolta gives a stellar performance, like super awesome. More Wes Anderson, Life Aquatic. I just rewatched this uh, last week. This movie is freaking hilarious. Bill Murray's amazing in it. The only problem I have with this movie is that it does feel a, a little, a little long. Like it's two hours, and I feel like a little bit could be cut down, but I still really enjoy it. All right, I bought this because I uh, will go down. I'll show it later in the collection here. But I bought this because I've seen A Brighter Summer Day, and that might be one of the most amazing movies I've ever seen. And so I had to get Yee Yee. I hear this movie's amazing. It's another. It's a three-hour movie, so but it looks pretty incredible. And I mean, Brighter Summer Day really floored me. So if it's anything like that, then I'm sure I'm gonna truly love this movie. I'm excited. I'm very excited for this one. This movie is crazy and amazing, and I, uh, The Double Life of Veronique. I bought this because uh, I am I love Kieslowski. His um, Three Colors trilogy is currently my favorite Criterion films. This movie floored me. I did not know what to make of this movie, but it was one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. I uh, saw it on the channel, so I had to buy it on Blu-ray. I haven't opened it yet, but I love this movie. God, and Irene Jacob, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I play a lot of the songs in this movie on guitar inside Lewin Davis. Um, I want more Coen Brothers on Criterion Collection. They do a really good job with some really cool special features and stuff like that. This is an under underrated Coen Brothers movie, I feel. Inside Lewin Davis is really just an amazing tragedy, really. That's it's like a it's a tragic comedy, this movie. I love it. Oscar Isaac, dude. He's an, a wonderful actor. I saw this one uh, during the month of October, Dressed to Kill, Brian De Palma. Um, probably would have had more impact if I saw it back when it was released because the twist ending in this movie is like the most cliched twist ending ever. Can't really knock away points from the movie because it was made in 1980 and a bunch of movies kind of copy that ending. I liked it, I just didn't love it. All right, we're about to head into some David Lynch stuff, Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. I was hesitant about this purchase because I already have the Twin Peaks box set. I, I love David Lynch and Twin Peaks is one of my favorite television shows of all time. So in the box set, it comes with Twin Peaks, but I, I just felt wrong not having the Criterion version. So I actually own two copies of this movie. I haven't even opened this one up yet, but I love this movie. I love Twin Peaks. I just had to get it. Maybe the most mainstream movie on Criterion Collection. That's probably up for debate. Silence of the Lambs. I mean, who hasn't seen this movie? An amazing, amazing film. I actually have not watched this Criterion version of it. I've, I would love to dive into some of the special features, but yeah, I've, I've been watching this movie since I was like 15. I love this movie. My second Wong Kar Wai film, In the Mood for Love. What a amazing love story. I've never seen anything quite like it. The dude, his movies are just pure cinema. Really, really good stuff. Love this movie. Watched this one not too long ago. Elevator to the Gallows. God, this movie was so cool. It's mainly talked about because Miles Davis does the score for it, and the score is amazing, but the movie is also incredible. Like, what an awesome French thriller. This movie was great. All right, more David Lynch for the next two or three choices here. Mulholland Drive, this is also in my top 10. Um, this movie's insane. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about it. Blue Velvet, I literally like jumped up and down when I heard Criterion was doing a release of this. I was like, where's Blue Velvet? They need to do a Criterion release of Blue Velvet, and they did, and I am so happy because Blue Velvet is one of the most amazing movies. If I did a list of my top 10 favorite movies released in the 80s, this would definitely be in the top five. And then Eraserhead. This movie is weird and freaked me out, and I'm not sure what to think of it, but I definitely wasn't bored. I was definitely entertained, and what a trip. Trippy. This one I bought because my mom highly recommended it, and I haven't seen it. All About Eve. Um, the reason she recommended this is because we I showed her Sunset Boulevard, which she had never seen before. And I said, I can't believe this movie didn't win Best Picture. And she's like, well, what won Best Picture of 1950? I was like, I'm like some movie called All About Eve. She's like, oh. Well, that movie's actually kind of amazing. So I was like, all right. So yeah, I still need to check this one out. We'll see. I, I don't know if it's going to be Sunset Boulevard. Come on now. It's like one of the greatest movies ever made. Another one of my recent purchase, Marriage Story. Um, this is a very, very personal movie for me. I've seen divorce 
up close and personal on two different occasions in my life and this movie just impacted me like you wouldn't believe and so I'm like I had to I had to buy it amazing amazing film I don't know a lot about this director all I know is that people talk about him constantly and so I'm like all right I'm gonna do a blind purchase Sancho the bailiff sounds like it's really depressing I've already been in depressed mood, so I don't know if I'm ready for this one just yet, but I am excited to uh, dive into it. You gotta be in a mood, you gotta be in a mood. Richard Linklater, uh, one of the few films I haven't seen of his slacker. I just, it just made sense for me to get this. I already have Before Trilogy, I have Boyhood, I have Days and Confused, so I'm like, I need to get his, uh, his very, very first. I really don't know much about this movie, other than the fact that apparently Kevin Smith found it hugely inspirational for when he made Clerks. But uh, yeah, slacker, I'm excited for this one. I've already mentioned numerous occasions that I'm a huge music nerd, so I had to get Bob Dylan's Don't Look Back. This is a really cool documentary. It doesn't even really feel like a documentary. It's basically you just hanging out with Dylan in 1966, which is amazing, because Dylan is fucking awesome. One of my favorite albums of all time, Blood on the Tracks. Might be the greatest heartbreak album ever. This one I got because my dad recommended it, and I have not seen it. A Face in the Crowd. Andy Griffith. Um, I, re I really don't know much about this movie at all, and I want to kind of keep it that way. I want to be surprised. So, yeah, we'll see. This is one of the first Criterion movies that I bought, and I still haven't freaking seen it. Uh, Qu Quietin? I don't know how to pronounce this. I got this because Hari Kiri is one of my favorite movies ever. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's going to be coming up soon. So, I, I got it on the strength of the director alone. I just, I haven't seen it yet. I got I to gotta see this one. More Terry Gilliam. If you're living in Las Vegas. Uh, I like this movie. Definitely not as much as a lot of people. Like, some people really love this movie. I enjoy it. I like it. It's just... It's weird. Blood Simple. Coen Brothers. This movie is amazing. I mean, it's Coen Brothers. I can't say anymore. I'm a big Roger Ebert fan, and that's kind of why I have an obsession with talking about movies and reviewing movies, so it made sense to get Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> The only film that he ever wrote was Russ Meyer, which is crazy to me. Uh, I hear this movie is absolutely insane and was uh, X-rated upon release, so that's exciting stuff. Um, do I need to see the original Valley of the Dolls in order to get this, or should I be good? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Saw this movie two months ago, Blue's the Warmest Color. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing movie. Uh, very emotionally impactful maybe a little too sexual. I'll be honest, some of the sex scenes went on for so long that I just like fast forward, I'm like, all right, I kind of get it. Um, but it is it is an amazing movie and the performances are pretty stellar. Yeah, this is a good one. This is one of those uh, Bergman films I've had well before I bought the box set, The Seventh Seal. I haven't seen it, I know. I think one of the reasons I haven't been watching Bergman, because A, I just recently got into him, and B, I've been dealing with a lot of like crazy depression stuff in his movies are super heavy and deal with a lot of that stuff and I don't know if I'm just ready for it yet but believe me I will watch it this movie is amazing Stanley Kubrick the killing maybe his most underrated movie uh, god this movie was so cool I, I bought it I was like hey it's a Kubrick movie I haven't seen this one yet and man is it awesome he was just destined to be one of the greats just destined all right the second Bergman I have seen this wild strawberries Really, really great movie. Really beautiful. Um, I feel like probably almost every art house movie has taken some inspiration from Wild Strawberries. It's it's that good. So this movie, I the funny story about this movie. So I watched like the first third or half of it on a phone at work when things were going really slow, and I never had a chance to finish it. But I was like, this movie was crazy. A woman in the dunes. I still haven't finished it to this day, but I bought it because I was like, wow, this was really impressive just on the little bit that I have seen. But <clears throat> I also got this because Kar uh, Tarkovsky said this is in his top 10 favorite movies. And I was like, ooh, Tarkovsky. I trust that dude. The Vanishing. This movie's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. That ending, I don't want to spoil it. Most people probably know the ending, but I'm not going to spoil it anyway. This movie's crazy. I bought this because <clears throat> I heard about it for a number of years. And then Stanley Kubrick said it was one of his, um, <clears throat> he said it was the scariest movie I ever saw. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I can definitely see where he's coming from. It's just a really interesting deconstruction of like a, th a thriller. Very, very interesting movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Next one, there's another one that's in my top 10. 
The Samurai, Jean-Pierre Melville. What an amazing movie, amazing pacing, amazing cinematography. I love the slow pace of this movie and, and just kind of the casual feel of it. Um, it's, it. It feels casual, it's also incredibly calculated. Uh, just one of the coolest movies, one of the coolest movies for sure. This one I've been wanting to watch for a while, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. A matter of life and death, I hear great things about this movie and as well as the filmmakers behind it so I just need to uh, I need to start cracking down on some of these movies I haven't seen yet. another one of my top 10 La Dolce Vita this was my first Fellini movie so that's probably why I have somewhat of a bias towards it because I've yet to see a Fellini movie that I haven't loved I've seen four of his movies already I've seen this I've seen eight and a half I've seen Amacord and I've seen um, I Vitiliani I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but I, I still need to see some of his other stuff. But yeah, this is still my favorite. Amazing, amazing film. I've already mentioned this a few times already, The American Friend. I love this movie. I watched this on the Criterion channel, so I decided to buy the Blu-ray of it. Um, I really love the cinematography. It's uh, Robbie Mueller. Mueller, is it Mueller? It's got the umlauts over the U. Robbie Mueller. Anyway, he's probably my favorite cinematographer. Just it looks beautiful. This one I got because of my mom. She showed it to me, and I fell in love with it immediately broadcast news uh, amazing comedy one of the best feel-good movies ever <laughs> yep I watched this one last year and yeah, I had to bring it into my top 10 criterion movies ever this movie's incredible I know I, I complain about movies that are so long that I need to plan my day around and this movie is 236 minutes long and originally I was planning on watching two hours one day and then two hours the next day to split it up into segments. I ended up watching the whole thing because I the story was so compelling. One of the greatest movies I've ever seen. Another top 10 choice for me, Boyhood. This is an incredibly personal movie for me. I think I'm a year, am I a year older? I'm almost the same age as the kid in this movie and our lives are kind of eerily similar, at least how it's portrayed in this film. A lot of the stuff he's gone through, I have also gone through, so I, I get very emotional when I watch this movie. But yeah, Boyhood, one of my most personal films. I love this movie, Notorious, Alfred Hitchcock. Um, yeah, I, I, a lot of these I watched for the first time last year, and this is one that I hadn't seen, and now it's one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. I'm looking to kind of just watch all of his movies and do a do a ranking of what my personal favorites are, but yeah, this is up there. This is one of my personal favorites. I love Notorious. This is a blind purchase that I bought, and I watched it the same day that I bought it, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Wow. I literally bought this just because I thought the cover looked really cool, and then I also bought it because it was a brand new movie. It was like 2019. I never heard of it. I never heard of it, never saw a trailer. So I was like, I'm just going to buy this just because just cuz and I watched it and holy crap this movie is amazing what a beautiful beautiful movie yeah wow that one really kind of floored me so I've been a Jackie Chan fan since I was like seven I had to and when I saw they were releasing this I went are you kidding me this is insane what a great idea um, I will say that police story one is like a lot better than the second one the second one drags quite a bit like, there's amazing fight sequences in Police Story 2, but it's definitely not as good as the first one. But what a cool addition to the Criterion Collection. Which reminds me, I should probably get that Bruce Lee box set. Although, I already own all those Bruce Lee movies on Blu-ray. Ah, what a dilemma. The Great Escape. I haven't seen it. I probably should see it. My favorite Kurosawa movie. High and Low. I do... You know, I, I'm going to take that back. It's tied. It's tied with Seven Samurai. But I love this movie. It's, it's like Kurosawa is like, you know what? I can do Hitchcock, and I can do it probably even better. This movie is incredible. This is the movie. This is the one that started it all. My obsession with Criterion movies. Harakiri. Also in my top ten favorite uh, films ever. Yeah. Um... I went into this movie knowing nothing about it. And if and at first I thought I was going to be disappointed because I discovered Criterion movies because of my love of samurai movies. And people were like, well, this movie isn't really like a samurai action movie. Just just watch it. And I was like, oh, all right. The story was so amazing. And that twist ending was just like, oh my God. But Harikiri, my favorite samurai movie. I even put it above Seven Samurai. I know, but this is what started my love of Criterion movies. Once I discovered this movie, it was all about Criterion after that. An interesting David Fincher release, The Game. 
Uh, I've, I've known about this movie well before it came out of Criterion. I, it's just kind of interesting that they chose this to be a Criterion film. Not that it's a bad movie, because this movie's kind of crazy. It's a movie that you're either going to absolutely love the ending of this movie, or you're really going to hate it. Depends on who you are. I kind of love how batshit crazy that ending is, but uh, yeah, the game. I love David Fincher, by the way. So I bought this because uh, it was recommended to me after I bought the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, Lady Snowblood. I guess this was also hugely inspirational for the Kill Bill movies, and Kill Bills might actually be my favorite Tarantino movie. But yeah, I need to watch this. This is... No, okay, this is the second documentary. I was gonna say this is the only documentary. No, this is the second documentary I have on Criterion. Crumb, this movie is crazy. Uh, Terry Swigoff, director of Ghost World, uh, he's an awesome filmmaker. This is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen, uh, regardless of the subject matter. I was floored by this movie. If you haven't seen Crumb, give it a shot. It's pretty wild. This is essential. If you don't have this, you're not a true Criterion fan. I'm just kidding, but eight and a half. Come on now. This movie's amazing. I've only seen it once though, but it really like, it, it stayed with me. So I'm like, do I, I, I do need to see it again though, don't I? I probably should, but yeah, eight and a half. I love this movie. So I bought this because this is one of the few, I'm Billy Wilder is one of my favorite filmmakers. So I, I love Sunset Boulevard, Double Indemnity. Um, this is one of the few that is on the collection, Ace in the Hole, I haven't seen it. So I gotta watch this because I love Billy Wilder. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check this one out. All that jazz, I really like this movie. Definitely a, uh, a reimagining of eight and a half and you will. My only complaint about this movie is that the ending song goes on for way, way too long. <laughs> Uh, it needs to be like three minutes shorter would be great. But yeah, I still really enjoy this movie. I heard that this is Kubrick's favorite film. Is that true? Interesting. It's amazing. It's also amazing. I'm a chord. Uh, I want to rewatch this one soon. This is an amazing movie. Fellini, man. I want to get that Fellini box set. That's on my list. I need to get that Fellini box set. Okay. Here's the last bit of movies we have here. We got Bicycle Thieves, one of my personal favorite movies. This is also in my top 10. Love Streams, I have not seen this. Uh, I, to be honest, I'm not on a good start with Cassavetes because I saw The Killing of a Chinese Bookie and I really did not like that movie. I watched that whole movie and I was just like, why? So we'll see, I'm not on a good start with Cassavetes, but I'm still gonna give him a shot, so Love Streams. The movie I might be watching later today because I've been really enjoying Jim Jarmusch. I've not seen this one, Mystery Train. So if I watch this today, I will also do a review. So be on the lookout for that. Being There, another one of my personal favorite movies ever. Uh, I would love to rewatch this one soon and do a review of it. But yeah, Hal Ashby, good stuff. One I'm excited to watch that I have not seen yet, Blow Up. Two of my favorite movies have cited this as a major influence. We have De Palma's Blowout and we have Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation. Both take huge inspirations from this movie, so I really don't know what to expect. The other thing I know is that Bergman really hated this director <laughs> and said that this was his masterpiece. He said, although I hate this director, this movie is actually incredible. So I'll check it out. And the last bit of movies I have here that I'm just gonna rattle off real quick are ones uh, on regular DVD. Some of these are pretty older versions of the Criterion film. So I have La Strada. I haven't seen this one yet. Definitely looking forward to checking this out. This is about to be upgraded though, because they're doing the box set of Fellini. So that's pretty cool. High and low, uh, before I got the Blu-ray version, I had this one. Andre Rublev, I've not seen this one yet. I bought this before the Blu-ray was available and it's available now. So if I watch this one and I really love it, then I'll upgrade it to uh, Blu-ray. Third Man, I love this movie. I bought this because the Blu-ray is out of print and people are asking for like 300 bucks for the Blu-ray, which is not gonna happen. So I would love a re-release of this on Blu-ray Criterion, if you're watching. Uh, Knights of Kabiria. I haven't seen this one yet. I know, I know. Everyone's like, this might be Fellini's best movie. Uh, so this is also being upgraded because of the box set. I'm excited for that. And Ikiru. I have not seen this one yet because emotionally I am not ready for that. But I, uh, I will be one day. I just forgot. There's one more film that's not out here. I'm gonna go grab it. And the last film that I am sure will never get a Blu-ray update because of the controversy behind it, Man Bites Dog. I watched this movie. Yeah, it's uh, it's out there. <laughs> it's about as dark as a dark comedy gets. I mean, look at that cover. If you can't tell, 
that is a baby pinky. Taboo. All right, guys, so that's it. That's the whole uh, uh, Criterion collection that I have going so far. I'm also gonna be doing updates, so when I do uh, purchases of Blu-rays, I'll show those off to you guys and uh, show you how big this collection will get. I'm, I'm hoping it gets pretty big. I'm pretty proud of it so far, but yeah, thanks for watching.